Okay guys, now that we have our lettuce and our bread ready to go in our sandwich, we need to add our tomato and we're gonna add our bacon. Tomato is pretty much straightforward. You can use either method that you're comfortable with. I don't mind. I'm gonna drag, excuse me, my tomato onto my plate. Um, remember that we're hitting enter to get out of our transform mode. I'm gonna rasterize my layer because see the little icon? rasterize my layer and then for this one I'm going to use the quick select tool and I'm going to select my tomato okay and I want to make sure that when I'm doing this I get a nice smooth edge so I'm going to inverse command shift I or select inverse and then I'm going to delete or backspace to get rid of my dancing ants we select deselect and then I'm going to take my eraser again I'm going to use a soft softer brush about 70 75 and I'm gonna set my brush size to one that works for me and I'm just gonna go around and remember you can use those bracket keys and I'm just gonna go around and clean up the edge of my tomato now I'm doing this very quickly but you of course will take your time and do a much better job than what I'm doing right now remember that tomatoes are round that we don't want to have a bumpy tomato that see that looks tacky so we want to make sure that we keep a nice smooth edge on our tomato okay all right so now we're gonna add our bacon okay I'm gonna drag and drop just like I did before I'm hitting enter to get out now with this one I'm gonna use my magic wand right click magic wand I'm gonna hold down that shift key to select all my different pieces and I'm gonna remove my background after I rasterize my layer now for the bacon we're gonna do something a little different I'm gonna deselect I'm actually going to come up here and I'm going to change the opacity. This should seem familiar to you from when we were in Illustrator. And I'm going to turn it down just a little because the idea is, is I want it to look see-through like bacon does when it's been cooked, right? So I'm going to increase my size a little and I've turned my opacity up. And then of course I'm going to take my eraser again and kind of clean up some of my rough edges and make sure everything looks nice and smooth. Okay, that's all of the pieces for my sandwich. Now we're going to do something else. I want to have mustard on my sandwich. So I'm going to come down to the bottom of my layers and I'm going to hit this little button. It looks like a post-it pad or a notepad and that's going to create me a new layer. Or you can say layer, new, layer. And I'm going to call this mustard and I'm going to say okay. And I'm going to make sure it's on top and it's really important to make sure that you've gotten yourself a new layer because if you were to draw your mustard, say on your bacon or your tomato and you messed up and you need to erase, you're gonna end up erasing your bacon as well and nobody wants to erase their bacon. So I'm gonna come down and I'm gonna choose using my, my color selection here, I'm gonna come over here and I'm gonna pick a yellow that looks like mustard. So just a nice bright kind of yellow. I'm gonna choose a paintbrush um, it's also B on your keyboard, but then I'm going to come up here and I want 100% hardness. I don't want fuzzy mustard. Nobody wants fuzzy mustard. I'm going to turn my size up because I want a nice good squirt. Okay, And all I'm going to do is on this mustard layer that I have, I'm just going to blob some mustard on. Okay. Now if you want to undo, you can obviously undo and then change the way it looks. That might be better. But the question I have is, does this look like mustard? And the answer, of course, is no, it looks flat. So we're gonna add something called a layer style. You can access layer styles by going to layer, new, um, excuse me, haha, layer, layer style, and then you can choose, the one we're gonna use is called bevel and emboss. The other way to get to it is over here, we're gonna double click in the gray next to the word mustard, and I get my layer style menu. I'm choosing bevel and emboss. And if you see, just checking it right away already gives me something that looks like some has some depth. But I'm gonna come out here and I'm gonna choose a pillow emboss so it looks a little rounder. I'm gonna turn my depth up. I'm gonna turn my size up. I'm gonna soften it a little. And I'm just gonna play with it, you know, until I get something that looks like mustard, okay? So when I'm kind of happy with it, which I'm getting there, you know, it's kind of coming along. Um, I'm going to kind of leave it to a place where I think it looks pretty good and I'm going to say okay. Now that looks to me a lot more like mustard. Now if you want to do ketchup or mayonnaise, that's fine with me. That's just a color change. Okay, 
So now I've got all of my different pieces and now I need a new piece of bread. So I'm gonna take my bread and I'm gonna right click, okay? And I'm gonna say duplicate layer. This is also command J on your keyboard. And the issue is, is my bread, I'm gonna do this, it's gonna call it a copy, that's fine. It's gonna be right here. So remember when we talked about stacking order and arranging, I'm gonna drag my bread above my mustard, just drag and drop. Now my problem is I can't see all my little pieces and the, nobody puts on bread that straight. So I'm gonna turn on my transform. You can get to this by edit, free transform or command T. And I'm gonna just rotate it just a little so that I start kind of seeing the rest of my pieces. No biggie. I'm gonna hit enter to get out of this or return. And I personally like my bread to be a little bit more toasted. So we're gonna talk about what's called the burn tool, which is right here if you guys look, and it's O on the keyboard, shift O if you need to drop down to it. I'm gonna turn my brush down and all I'm gonna do is this tool basically takes whatever layer you're on, so you wanna make sure you're on the right layer, and will darken the colors that are there. Now when you first start, it's gonna, you're gonna see some greens and that's okay but you're doing just kind of stripe. Every time you release, it's gonna layer on top. And I'm just gonna add these grill marks like you see if somebody put it in like a panini maker or something until I start to get my bread looking the way I like. Now, I like my bread a little more burnt than some people do, so it's okay if yours isn't as burnt as mine. I like a little char. And the idea is when I pull back, it's gonna look like it was toasted, right? Not bad, right? The last thing I'm gonna do for my sandwich before I'm all said and done is my sandwich looks very flat. It doesn't have a lot of depth. So I'm gonna actually hide all of these and I'm gonna start with just my first piece of bread. One of the things that we can do is we can add a drop shadow. When you have a drop shadow on something, it takes your object from looking very plain to looking like it's got some depth. So on my slice, I'm gonna double click again to pull up that layer style menu and I'm gonna come down to drop shadow and I'm gonna check the box. So see the drop shadow? Now, just like we did drop shadows in Illustrator, you can adjust the distance, the spread, okay? Or the size, okay? So the thing that you have to keep in mind is a piece of bread should have more of a shadow than a piece of lettuce. So every one of these kind of needs to be adjusted, in my opinion, evenly so that each one has the right amount of drop shadow. So there's my piece of bread, that one's done. So I'm gonna turn my lettuce on and I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna add a drop shadow, but this time again, I need less shadow because a piece of lettuce doesn't give out as much shadow as say a piece of bread. Okay, just a little baby shadow. I'm gonna turn my tomato back on and you get the point, right? I'm just gonna keep adding shadows. I like a big slice of tomato, so I want my shadow to be a little thicker add some bacon drop shadow. I don't want it to look like it's floating. See how the bacon looks like it's floating? Bacon is real thin, so it should have barely a shadow. I'm gonna turn on, I'm gonna not actually put a drop shadow on my mustard because the bevel and emboss added my shadow for me. And then last but not least, I'm gonna add my top piece of bread and put on a little bit of a bigger shadow so it looks like I got a thick piece of bread. Now, if you get done before the period is over, you need to add cookies or chips or napkins or a drink, ants, whatever it is you wanna to add to enhance the way your sandwich looks. So by the time you're all said and done, your sandwich is going to look very delectable and it's gonna look as realistic as possible. If you have any questions, please ask.